Hey, this is Dr. Erdman at Madison Vein and Laser and Madison Medispa. Today, what we're going to do is show you a clip of one of our patients who just got done with his endovenous thermal ablation procedures for the trunks that were broken in his legs, so the great saphenous vein and the small saphenous vein. And he's moving on to do ultrasound-guided sclerotherapy of the residual branches that are left over in his leg after those procedures have been completed. So the first thing that I'd like to show you is a picture of his map, uh, his venous flow mapping, which is gonna show you what has already been done, the thermal ablation procedure on his great saphenous and small saphenous vein, which on this diagram that you're gonna see next will be drawn in black. And then the residual branches that are broken that still need to be treated, which you'll see drawn in red. All right, so as you can see from that diagram, the proximal portion of both his great and small saphenous veins have been ablated uh, using radiofrequency. And what's left is primarily below the knee, uh, again in the diagram shown in red, and all of those branches are what we're gonna be addressing today with ultrasound-guided foam sclerotherapy. We will cut to that, and you guys can hear what Mike has to say while we do some ultrasound-guided sclerotherapy. So we're here with our wonderful patient, Mike, who's just got done with his thermal ablation procedure. So for Mike, we had to do great saphenous and small saphenous to get those main trunks closed off. And now we're on to the second procedure, which is the ultrasound guided sclerotherapy, where we address the rest of the branches. And I guess before we, we get too far, I'm gonna ask Mike, how was the, the endovenous thermal ablation for you? How did you feel about those two procedures? Great, a lot. A lot. I was worried about it at first, but um, again, with your uh, immense knowledge about the procedure and um, comforting tone and explaining everything front to back, back to front, uh, everything went Better than the plan, yeah. Better, better than plan. Awesome. And was the the pain level tolerable for you? Absolutely. Uh, minimal to no pain actually with me. Yeah. Awesome. You said you had a little more bruising, and you still you have some bruising that's left over. Um, typically, like I told you today, if you have a little bit of bruising, it's just because you have a bunch of other branches that are sort of uh, around the veins that we're treating with thermal ablation. But any bruising that you have will come and go quite rapidly. Um, so today. Uh, we're going to start with the injections, and I'll typically start on the bottom part of the great saphenous vein. And just so you can see what that looks like on ultrasound, Tracy, if you pan over here to the ultrasound screen, I'm going to line up over it. And here you can actually see two veins, the great saphenous and a branch of the great saphenous right here, those two little black circles. It's a cross-sectional view, so it's like we cut those veins in half and we're looking down the tube. But if I turn my ultrasound probe 90 degrees, which I'm gonna do now, you'll see that great saphenous vein lengthen out across the screen. So there it is running all the way across the screen. And again, that's the vein we're gonna start with here because that's the bottom part of what's broken in, in Mike's leg. So we'll start right there. And when we come back, uh, you'll see me doing an injection and just be able to see how that looks. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is just show you uh, the size of the needle that we use to numb up the skin. It's a teeny tiny little 30 gauge needle. So right here, you can hopefully see that against my glove. I'll put my thumb next to it. So it's, it's about as long as my thumbnail maybe. And really all we're doing is putting in just that tiny little tip. So most people only feel just a tiny little poke. It's not like having your blood drawn or anything like that. It's much less painful. And then any additional injections I do are done through that little numb spot. So um, we'll take care of that right now if you don't wanna just see how that goes. So I'm gonna line back up over that vein and I, I'm, probably gonna block your view just a little bit. Tracy, can you see that okay or no? Mm -hmm. So right here's where it's gonna be, Mike. One, two, three, pinch. So that little pinch, how was that, Mike? Uh, didn't feel a thing. Okay, so usually it's, it's fairly tolerable. Um, lidocaine can cause a little bit of burning and stinging, but we always use buffered lidocaine, so it should be not as bad as any of the other injections that you've had. Most people kind of find it annoying more than painful. And we really do try to cut down on how many of those injections you get. So next thing I'm gonna do is actually the injection in the vein. We'll stop here and when we come back, I'll be ready to do the first injection of our ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy session for Mike. Okay, so we're back and we're gonna line up over that same vein. So I am gonna go right through that numb spot. 
and then you're going to see my needle coming in on the on the ultrasound screen right there. So I just popped into that vein, and then when I inject, that medication is going to fill up that vein. So you're going to see it bright white right here. One, two, three. So there it comes. That medication is basically a fancy soap, and what it does is it causes inflammation of the lining of the vein wall, causing that vein to scar down and go away, very similar to what the endovenous thermal ablation procedures do. And then I can turn back in long view and I can see how far that medication traveled. So you can see here now, instead of being just dark black, you can see a lot of medication right inside that vein, it's bright white. And then it's even getting out into some of the little branches up on the surface of the skin. So we'll pause there and then we'll go to the next little injection. All right, so we are on to really the bigger branch that Mike came in with. He had a pretty big bulgy branch that came along the back of his calf here. And I already numbed it up, so I'm gonna line up right where I numbed up. Again in long view. And a little pinch here, Mike. You can see the needle tip going right into that vein. And then here's some of that medication. I'm gonna put a little pressure here for just a second and I'll come back to it. I'm just sort of manipulating which way that medication flows. You can see the, the foam in the syringe. And now as I come back, you can see it's starting to fill that branch. And so I covered the bottom of the branch and some of that saphenous vein going up the leg. The nice thing about ultrasound sclero, as I described earlier, is you can actually see how far that medication traveled. So once again, I can see all the foam in those branches, right? So I can see that that medication has covered those bad veins. But if I go up more proximally, closer to his knee, I can see that there's no medication there yet. So I can tell exactly where I've treated and what I've treated and exactly what still needs to be treated so there's no guesswork with it. And let me have Mike pipe in right now. Mike, how is it feeling? Is it okay? It is great, yeah. Any pain? No pain whatsoever. Perfect. All right, so we're done with the ultrasound guided sclerotherapy for Mike. We're having him elevate his leg. So you can see right here, this is the left leg that we worked on today. You can see a few little spots where I did some injections, just those little pokes. Um, I just wanted to, to bring you back uh, to give Mike a chance to just reflect on how that procedure was. Mike, what did you think? It went great. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Was there a lot of pain? No, none at all. Nope. Okay. Nope. Easy procedure. Anything at all other than that it was easy and not too painful? That about sums it up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Dr. Everyone was great. So I basically just wanted to bring you back so you could see that it's not a bad procedure. We weren't cutting away and, and you know, hiding a part of the procedure for, from you. So it's just a few little injections on the branches. That's taking care of the rest of the leg. We're gonna see Mike back in about four weeks just to make sure everything is gone. Um, and that's it. All right, so that's ultrasound guided sclerotherapy. Uh, very straightforward and easy procedure to do. As you can see, ultrasound has taken away all the guesswork uh, that used to really prevent sclerotherapy from being effective in large vein patients. Now we can clearly see uh, what's been treated and what we still need to treat. It's very well tolerated. Most people would describe it as more annoying than painful, uh, just simply because the needles are so small. If you have a needle phobia, we can usually get around that by giving you a mild anxiolytic, in which case you would need a driver, but it still is easy to get around that. Uh, the typical patient is going to require between 10 and 20 injection sites for traditional ultrasound guided sclerotherapy and less than that if we're using Verathena, which is the commercial grade of ultrasound guided sclerotherapy. And I'll just wrap up by saying once again that if your physician or whoever you're going to does not offer ultrasound guided sclerotherapy, you're probably going to be disappointed in your results because endovenous thermal ablation or surgery can only do so much. Uh, and if you don't have the extra step taken of doing ultrasound sclero on the rest of the branches, you are likely to continue to have symptoms and you're certainly not going to be happy with your cosmetic results. So whenever you go in to see a provider, make sure to ask them if they offer ultrasound guided sclerotherapy. It's probably the most important thing that we do in this practice 
to get our patients to the end point where they're happy with both how their legs look and how their legs feel.